How's it going, Chip Tribe? It's me, Chips, here with another new episode of the Chip Tide Show. And I gotta say, I'm real excited for this one. I'm ready. My assistant Richard is ready. You guys know him. You love, well, well you tolerate him. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now, so far on the show, we've played a lot of great games, but never a game that is truly challenging. A game that pushes me to my limits and tests my strength as a gamer. Well, that is all about to change right here, right now, because today... We're playing Enter the Gungeon. Ho 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 boy. Here we go. Enter the Gungeon was released to the world back in 2016, and the Switch version, which I'm playing today, shocking I know, came out a year later. That means that, at the time of this recording at least, this game is about three years old, and yet somehow, I had never even heard of it until a few months ago. Maybe it's because it's not the type of game I usually gravitate towards, but when I did eventually learn that it was available for the Switch, I decided to give it a shot. In this game, you play as a nameless explorer known as a Gungeoneer. Your task is simple, descend through five floors of an ancient temple, the titular Gungeon, and retrieve the mythic Gun to Kill the Past, which I'm pretty sure is a time machine of sorts that allows you to change something about your past. If you couldn't tell from all that, this game really likes gun puns. Like, maybe a little too much? But as far as a story, that's pretty much all you get out the gate. No real background on how the Gungeon came to be, no lore about why sentient bullets roam its halls, not even a reason why our hero wants to kill their past. I mean, what could they have possibly wanted to change? Did they do bad on a test and want to take it again knowing all the answers? Or, or maybe they want to warn their past self against eating that meatloaf at that party last week because everyone who did got food poisoning. Eh, who's to say? But as far as I know, the game sure doesn't give you any answers. To my understanding, this game is a type of bullet hell roguelike. Now, if you, like me, have absolutely no idea what that means, don't worry, it's actually simpler than it sounds. You play from a top-down perspective, and as you could probably guess by the title, everybody has guns. In fact, most of the enemies are just straight up gun and bullet shaped zombies. I guess you could call them Gun dead? I get it? See, game, you're not the only one who can make gun puns. Oh. Oh, wait, they literally are called gun dead. Oh, dang it. Thought it was clever, but guess not. All right, well, back to the game. Each floor is randomly generated each run, and you basically just have to get as far as you can without getting killed. Sounds simple enough, but this game is the quintessential example of easier said than done. As I mentioned in the intro, this game is extremely difficult. It's not the kind of thing where after a few hours of practice, you can make it through every time. It's more like the kind of game that you will maybe beat once after playing it all summer. As for me, well, I have yet to get all the way through. In fact, I'm still having trouble getting past the second floor, but have no fear because I vow that before this episode is done, I will conquer the Gungeon. But before you can really understand why this game is so difficult, you first need to understand yourself. And, and no, that's not some deep philosophical message. I just meant that you have to understand your character's abilities and all that stuff. As I mentioned before, your main mode of attack is a gun. You start off with a default gun that's not too strong but has infinite ammo. But as you traverse through the gungeon, you can amass a large arsenal of all sorts of wacky firearms. But we'll get back to that later. Every character starts off with three hearts of life, and most enemy shots deal half heart of damage. You can get heals throughout your run, but not as often as you might hope, so just try not to get hit. But, as I said earlier, much easier said than done. In terms of abilities, you can move around with the left stick and aim with the right. Since both your thumbs are occupied with the sticks, the only real buttons you have readily available to use are the triggers and bumpers on the top, which you use for shooting and dodge rolling. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this control scheme 
took a lot of getting used to and it kind of hurt my hands. But the game allows you to completely customize your controls, so I was able to find a setup that didn't give me hand cramps after 10 minutes. As far as basic abilities, that's pretty much all you got. Walk around, shoot, and dodge roll. But, as I alluded to earlier, there are four different playable characters, each of which has their own unique set of skills that they bring to the table. The first one is my personal favorite, the Marine. His buffs are pretty easy to understand. For starters, he starts off with one piece of armor, which is basically just a free hit. He also has an item that allows him to fully restock one of his guns at any time, which can be a real game changer on the later floors. But the real reason why I like him is because his starting gun is real strong and can pretty reliably carry you through the first two floors on its own. Next up is the pilot, aka literally just Han Solo. I mean, come on, he's got a laser gun, he's called the pilot. I see you guys. But being the smoothest criminal in the galaxy, it makes sense that his biggest asset is his lockpick, which gives you a chance to open some of the many chests scattered throughout the gungeon without using up a key. But you have to be careful, because if your lockpick fails, that chest is locked for good. For this reason, the pilot has the potential to be really good, but is a little too RNG based for my taste. But I can't help but wondering, what could Han Solo possibly want to kill about his past? This is the whole getting frozen thing? That probably sucked. Oh, no, no, you know what? You know what? I got it. It's the whole Han shot first debacle. I mean, he probably hates when people bring that up, right? But you know whose reason for wanting to kill the past isn't hard to figure out? Our next playable character, the convict. She's got all sorts of tricks up her sleeve. I mean, she's an escaped criminal, so it makes sense that she's okay with breaking the rules. And indeed, she isn't because she starts off with not one, but two guns. She also has a Molotov that she can use to create a pool of fire that damages anything that walks through it. Sounds really good, except that it also works on you, and I always accidentally hurt myself with it. I mean, I didn't know what I expected. If you light a fire and then proceed to run through said fire, yeah, it's gonna hurt you. And the last of the playable characters is the Hunter. And I guess she didn't want the convict to steal all the fun, because she also starts with two different guns. But what really sets her apart is the fact that she has a dog. And what can this dog do, you ask? Fetch. It's real good at fetch. In fact, that's just about the only thing it's good at. Speak, roll over, play dead, nope, nope, none of that. Just fetch. Stop fetching, man. This doesn't have to be your life. You can just leave some things there, be free. You know. I bet the thing this hunter wants to kill about her past has something to do with this dog. Probably wishes she taught it a few new tricks or something. But look at me. I'm already four pages into this script, and I haven't even told you what a typical run of the game is like. You start off on the first floor, because, you know, that's usually how it works with numbers. And as I said before, the layout of each floor is completely random each time, so you'll have to explore it and fill out the map as you go. Most of the rooms have a few waves of enemies in it that you'll need to kill before you can leave, but the fun part is that each time you enter a new room, you have no idea what you're in for. It could have just one or two pushovers in it that'll take you all two seconds to knock out, or it could be filled with wave after wave of bullets and you only just barely escape with your life. Or maybe you'll stumble across the shop. There's a one on each floor, and you can buy all sorts of things from heals to keys to reloads to new guns and power-ups, assuming you have the money, of course. You get money from defeating enemies, but you never seem to have as much as you want, so you gotta be smart with what you buy. <laughs> it's just like real life! More often than not, I'll see a really cool gun in the shop, only to realize that I only have a quarter of the money needed to buy it. So what I like to do instead is load up on keys which can be used to open up chests that you find scattered throughout the dungeon. The chests are easily my favorite part of this game, just because of the sheer variety of stuff you can get out of them. You could pick up something like a heal or ammo pack, which are kinda useful, but maybe you'll find a sick new gun! From what I can tell, there are hundreds of guns in the game, all of which has some pretty crazy and unique effects. Some of them are just straight up real guns, while others are super strange but still cool, and others still are straight up references to all sorts of games and movies and stuff, which is super cool. 
You start off with only a couple of guns thrown into the mix, but you can unlock more from the shop in the hub world. There's also two different types of items that you can find to help you in the gungeon. The first type is called active items, which means that you have to actively use them with the push of a button and can do all sorts of things. Some of them are one-time use, while others need to be recharged by defeating enemies, but the catch is you can only hold one to two of them at a time depending on your character. There are also passive items which, as you might have guessed, are always active and usually grant you some new ability or buff. There are literally so many and each one does something completely different that I couldn't even begin to describe them all. Unlike the active items, you can carry as many passive items as you want, so the more you get, the crazier the game becomes until you snowball into an unkillable machine. Theoretically, at least. I always still seem to get bopped on the regular, no matter how many passive items I have. But because there's so much variety in guns, active, and passive items, and it's completely up to chance which item you get, each new romp through the gungeon feels completely unique and fresh. Sometimes you'll find a bunch of super OP items and guns right away and you can just steamroll through the first floor, while other times you don't get jack and have to struggle for your life with the crappy starter gun the whole time. Or maybe you'll find just one gun that's so OP you can carry you through the first two floors on its own, only for it to run out of ammo and you realize that all your other gear sucks and you get rocked. This essentially gives the game infinite replay value, and even though I've met my end in the gungeon dozens of times already, I have yet to get bored of it. After fully exploring a floor, you have to take on one of the game's many bosses. Again, the boss you fight on each floor is random, so it's hard to prepare before going in. All the bosses I've seen are pretty imaginative and cool, and of course, you already know, they're all gun puns. Like this seagull with a Gatling gun that's called, you guessed it, the Gatling Gull. Genius. Or how about this snake lady with two machine guns? Wait, wait, wait. Let me guess, let me guess. Ma Medu Medus Medus gun? Oh, gore gun. Brilliant. So much better. I want to be mad, but I can't help but respect a good pun when I see one. But another thing about these bosses, they're balls hard. Like, seriously, if you underestimate these guys even a little bit, they will kill you. So be ready. But honestly, you could say that about this whole game. When I first booted it up, I was terrible at it. I could barely last more than a few minutes before getting killed by some random bullet on the first floor. It took me probably at least 10 tries before I even made it to the first boss, and even more before I set foot on the second floor. But I never got discouraged because each time I died, I knew what I did wrong and how to fix it. Now, in a lot of games that I play, there's some kind of level up system where you get stronger the longer you play. But Enter the Gungeon doesn't have anything like that. Each time you start a new run, you're just as weak as the last time you started. Well, but actually, saying this game doesn't have a level up system is kind of a lie. My character may never have leveled up, but someone did. Me. With each run, I got a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. The more times I played, the farther I got. Before long, I was able to reach the first boss every time. So this must be what it feels like to be a character in an RPG. You know what? It feels good. But I know what you're all thinking. After all my training, all my leveling up, have I fulfilled my promise at the beginning of this episode? Have I defeated the Gungeon? Uh, no, not yet, but fear not. This episode is not over yet. Alright, let's see, let's see. I just need to one more time, one more try and I can get it. Just gotta figure out some way to extend this episode a bit longer. Let's see, let's see. Richard, 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 please. I'm thinking. I gotta figure out a way to beat this game in the next few minutes. What? What was that? B.S. You didn't beat it. No way. <laughs> well, how long did it take you, huh? You're not a busy guy. You probably had time to sink hundreds of hours into it. Two tries? You beat it on your second try? I refuse to believe that. Nope, nope. Oh, God, now you're in my head. Now I have to beat it. All right, all right, let's see. What else can I talk about to extend this episode? Uh, how about all the secrets in the game? You can discover all sorts of cool things in the gungeon, like these jail cells that you can unlock to rescue NPCs who will show up in the hub world to help you out with stuff. Or this guy that lurks in the elevator shaft. 
if you bring him stuff that he asks for, he can make it so you can skip the first floor entirely if you want to. There's even a secret floor you can find to get even more stuff, but I won't spoil how. There's definitely loads of other hidden stuff that I have yet to discover, but that just means I have to go... Oh, oh, wait, 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 this might be the one, just a little... Ah, oh, dang it. I thought that was the one, I thought I was gonna have it. Oh, why is this game so hard? Am I so bad at it? Oh. Alright, alright, alright. One, one more go, one more go. I'll get it for sure this time. Okay, okay, okay. What else we're not talking about yet? Um, haha, uh, -ha, the music! The whole game has a kind of retro-sounding techno soundtrack that's super intense and super hype. And I really enjoy it. Bopping my head to some sick music while I'm bopping horns of bullets never gets old. Okay, okay, that didn't take long as I thought. Let's do one more time. Uh, hey, let's speculate some more on what these people want to kill about their past. Oh, that was a good bit, right? Oh, so funny. What a, okay, what else? More gun puns? Um, oh, okay, okay, let's see. Uh, dude, this game is so easy. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, eh? Not bad, not bad. Uh, you know, because, you know, shooting and guns and, and you know, stuff. Wait, there's a gun in the game called Fish in a Barrel? And it literally just shoots fish out of a barrel? And the flavor text says nothing easier? God, I can't even come up with my own pun without this game beating me. <sighs> okay. I never thought it would come to this. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Richard, I need your help. Only you can save this episode. I need you to beat the gungeon for me. No! What do you mean, no? You're my assistant! This is literally your only job! Fine, fine, you know what? You know what, that's fine. This episode will just be ruined. Nobody will ever take me seriously anymore. My career is over. <laughs> that's, that's all fine. All I wanted was a nice fairy tale ending. Show the viewers that, with enough determination, you can overcome any obstacle. It would have been beautiful. But now, look at me. I'm probably gonna die for real before I beat this freaking game. I guess I'll just have to settle for this. Except the fact that I will never conquer the Gungeon. Alright, I've accepted it. I can't beat this game before the end of the episode, and maybe I'll never do it. But you know what? That's okay. I play a lot of games, and this time, the game won. That's all. But you know what? Even after all my losses, after every time I got beat down, got back up, and got beat down again, I still had fun playing this game. And I don't think I'll ever get sick of it. Maybe one day, I'll figure out why these people want to kill their past. Maybe one day, I'll enter the gungeon, and I'll come out the other side alive. But that day is not today. And I'm okay with that. Wait, wait, wait. Did I not start this episode by saying, today, we enter the gungeon? God, it was right there! Oh, that would've been so great! Shoot, shoot! Wait. Shoot! I did it! That's a gun pun! I made my own gun pun! Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, game! I did it! Oh, oh man, that felt good! Oh, it's the little victories, you know? Alright, alright, just one more run. Just one more run. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Chip Tied Show. I had a lot of fun writing and recording this one, so I hope you like it too. If you want to see more videos like this, you can check out the rest of the episodes of the show on my channel, and subscribe so you can get notified when the next one comes out. You can also follow me on Twitter, at the Chip Tide, where I'll keep you up to date on everything that's going on. And with that, I will see you next time with another new episode of the Chip Tide Show. But until then, don't forget to take it easy. I hope you didn't forget about me. I'm coming. I told you to be careful what you wish for. <laughs>